Thank you for, for having me. I'm here to talk about Open Seas past, present, and future outline. I just want to give background on Open Seas capabilities uh, of Open Seas, which I'm sure you've seen uh, plenty of uh, community resources, some modeling challenges, uh, kind of the future of Open Seas, and then talk a little bit about technical writing uh, at the end. All right, but you know, if, if you follow uh, this this blog, right? You've you've probably seen a lot of these slides already, uh, but uh, kind of leverage them to put them in coherent uh, coherent order, uh, and uh, kind of uh, you know g g give some some background and and whatnot. Okay, so um, so first of all, right? Uh, Nonlinear analysis uh, is very simple. Uh, uh, it's fundamentally just a sequence of, of linear structural analyses where you, you form the equations, you solve the equations, you update the equations. All right. uh, this is a, a scene from a, uh, a movie uh, shot in my hometown uh, a few years ago, All right. uh, Durham, North Carolina. All right. Uh, but it's a scene where the the manager is describing the simplicity of baseball, and it's I've always thought of uh, open seas and nonlinear analysis uh, with from this scene. All right, or, or remember this scene when I think about uh, open seas. All right, so it's fundamentally simple. All right, although uh, it's uh, can be a little difficult at times, all right. But you know, you're just kind of putting these three steps in a loop, all right. That's your Newton loop, all right. Form, solve, update. Okay. So uh, another thing with with non nonlinear structural analysis is you know just kind of forget about Hooke's law for 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 a little bit, right? Like unlearn uh, what you have learned, right? Like like Yoda, I think we've all, you probably haven't seen Bull Durham, but I'm sure you've seen The Empire Strikes Back uh, from the, the early 80s, all right? But, you know, Hooke's Law doesn't apply, all right? So like your static resisting force is not, you know, at the structural level, uh, not the tangent stiffness times the displacement, all right? That can lead to some pretty big errors in interpretation uh, of your results. So just kind of, kind of forget about Hooke's Law, um, you know, like with, with loading, if you say KT tangent stiffness times displacement, you know, if this is your tangent stiffness, right, and then this is your displacement, KT times U is this little thing down here, right, when really you're up here, right, so you're going to misinterpret the results, right. And then with unloading, right, if you go here, here, unload, you know, here's your displacement, KT is here, you know, translate that over, you get this big triangle, here. So you're going to like way overestimate uh, the forces. You're going to be way up here when actually you're you're down here. All right. So just kind of forget about Hooke's law. All right. So but these two things uh, things get pretty uh, easier. Right. Okay. So uh, with that out of the way, the prerequisites. Let's say uh, at the end of the short course. Uh, but the history of open seas. I think you all know. Uh, came out of the PhD dissertation of Frank McKenna, which coincided with the start of the Peer Center, Pacific Earthquake Engineering Research Center, which also started in 1997. And uh, Open Seas was initially named G3, which was just the research group uh, within Peer, like that A, B, C, D, E, F, and then one, two, three, right? G3 was the simulation group, all right? Uh, and I know this is true because it's on Wikipedia, right? And I edited the article. So uh, anyway, but in uh, in 2000, uh, the name was changed to uh, Open Seas. But you know, uh, it's mostly written in C++. Open Seas is, uh, and it calls some uh, Fortran libraries, and it's open source. Anyone can contribute, and of course, uh, it's free for research, educational, internal use. All right. And then commercial distribution requires a license uh, from UC Regents, right, which I pasted over here. Okay. All right. So very brief history there. All right. And then, you know, in terms of, you know, what, what did uh, Open Seas look like uh, 20 years ago? Well, we can just look at the uh, uh, 
uniaxial material uh, directory, right, which is over here. Okay, there's, I don't know, maybe 12, 15 uniaxial materials, uh, you know, concrete 01, steel 01, that was all we had to work with, right, uh, back in 2001, all right, uh, and it kind of looked like uh, Chengdu, or this part of Chengdu in 1994, right? A couple buildings, not much on the skyline, a few chickens running around, right? But then, you know, compared with uh, Open Seas 2020, right, this is the uniaxial material directory. And there's maybe, I don't know, 60, 70, 80 uh, different materials there, right? Lots of concretes, right? Uh, a few steels in there, okay. Uh, you know, and you know, it's been built up, you know, like Chengdu, uh, this part of Chengdu, uh, 22 years later after the first photo, but in a lot of buildings, a right? little we'll brace frame here, that's nice, right? Okay, and uh, other things, all right. I don't see any chickens, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, so you know, o open seas has you know grown uh, quite a bit, and that's just the uniaxial materials. All right, other other parts of open seas have grown uh, just as much in the last 20 years. Okay, and you know it's making its way into uh, academic uh, publications, of course. So, a little analysis I did uh, last year on uh, ASE's Journal of Structural Engineering. You know, kind of search for all the articles containing the word analysis, which I think is a reasonable proxy for total number of JSE articles. All right. Um, and then also search for articles that contained abacus and open seas. All right. So like over the last 10 years, 2011 to 2020, the uh, number of analysis articles is, has generally grown. All right. Although 2019, there's a little bit of a dip there, but that's okay. All right. Uh, and then, you know, the number of articles with abacus in the, in the article, the number of articles with open seas. But, you know, this kind of inexact analysis shows, you know, about 10 to 15 percent of the articles uh, that contain analysis uh, within JSE published in the last 10 years, 10 to 15 percent uh, contain the word open seas. That's pretty good. You know, abacus is a little bit higher, um, you know, still, you know, widely used. Um, and there's, and there's also, you know, a lot of, you know, probably likely to have similar percentage in other journals like engineering structures. Okay, I see a lot of open seas articles uh, uh, from there. Okay, as well, and then uh, you know even other other journals uh, as well. Okay, so very prevalent uh, within the the field uh, within the uh, academic uh, world. Okay, so uh, source control. Uh, you know, Frank kept the source code on a zip disk for a short time, and uh, he wore cargo pants, and he would always put the, the disk at the end of the day into the front pocket of his cargo pants. Uh, this is not Frank, by the way, uh, but uh, I, I was instructed if he was hit by a bus to uh, extract the zip disk from his uh, dead body uh, if, if necessary. Fortunately, that didn't happen, all right? But uh, that was not a sustainable uh, approach to source control, right? Uh, IOmega zip drives went away as quickly as they became uh, popular. Uh, then we moved to CVS, concurrent version systems, and then subversion system SVN. And then uh, three or four years ago, uh, moved to GitHub, all right? So, and which has been a very good move, right? We can see current issues. Uh, you can make pull requests. Uh, uh, with new contributions. Frank and I uh, meet uh, once a week. He's been on vacation for a while, uh, so we haven't met in a few weeks, but you know, uh, before June, we were meeting about every week over Zoom and uh, kind of looking over pull requests and issues and you know, mostly just doing the easy stuff, I'll admit, uh, but uh, we, we, we do uh, pay attention to all these things, okay? Okay, so uh, you know there, there's like three ways to to kind of run Open Seas. I think you've uh, in this short course talked about one way. Uh, Minji talked about another way uh, in the last presentation. Uh, but you know you can all the the third way or the original way 
right, was to write main functions in C++, right, like, you know, int main, argc, argv, right, and before G3, now OpenSeas was linked with Tickle, you know, we compiled C++ programs. I didn't do a lot of that, uh, but, you know, this is what Frank did with his, his dissertation, right, it was write main functions, right, but, um, you know, these programs will run very fast, of course, uh, but they're difficult to develop and um, uh, maintain, all right? And you can still, you know, build your own main functions, all right? But, you know, Tickle and Python, you know, mask the allocation of objects and the linking of pointers, right? So, like, here, if you're not familiar with C++, right, here we're creating nodes, right, with tags, dimensions, uh, or is that degrees of freedom? No, no, I guess that's dimension. Yeah, probably dimensions. Or excuse me, degrees of freedom. Yeah, and then x and y are two dimensional. Uh, oh yeah, read the comments right. Tag number degrees of freedom coordinates right, and then add them to the domain. But you know, Tickle and Python like mask all this stuff uh, through their APIs, and you don't have to deal with you know allocating the objects and then setting all the the pointers. But you know, that's what's happening. Uh, under the hood. Okay, uh, Tickle, all right, the, the tool command language, uh, capitalized uh, T, little c, little l, not all caps, TCL. But it's a, you know, a very powerful string-based scripting language uh, and also comes with a, GUI, a nice GUI builder uh, called TK, all right. Uh, it was selected for G3 OpenSeas uh, over uh, MATLAB and Python, you know, around 1999 or so. Uh, MATLAB was not selected because it's proprietary. Uh, Python was around, but was relatively unknown uh, at the time. Um, you know, definitely not what it is uh, or what it has become in the last few years. Okay, so it was considered, but not uh, chosen. Uh, but I think you know, Tickle was the best choice at the time with uh, you know big data and hybrid simulation uh, as the the next big things uh, in uh, structural. Uh, and geotechnical engineering. Okay, but uh, you know the syntax for Tickle can be very difficult to learn uh, for scientific computing. All the brackets and dollar signs and stuff, but you get used to it, right? And then uh, there's limited packages for plotting and data processing. You know, so things like uh, EMU graph, uh, math, linear algebra, they have some limited functionality. Uh, but really not enough. Uh, so the typical solution, and again, something you, you've seen uh, in the short course is to post-process or link with MATLAB uh, or kind of write your own middleware uh, on the back end uh, to uh, post-process, okay? And the tickle uh, thing gives me a, a chance to uh, pick on EOS a little bit for its uh, capitalization uh, incorrect capitalization of, of open seas. All right, so just as uh, TCL is T little c little l, all right, not all caps TCL, uh, open seas is deliberately capitalized as, you know, S lowercase e, lowercase e, lowercase s, not open seas or open seas, all caps. All right. Uh, so ho hopefully I can prod a little bit to get uh, EOS to uh, update their their website and the logo, uh, but should be S little E little E little S. All right. Uh, so just remember no caps when you spell the the framework name. All right. And this is from a uh, a song by uh, MF Doom who I listened to quite a bit. Uh, unfortunately, he he recently passed away. Uh, at the end of last year. Okay, so um, just having a little fun, all right, uh, uh, with this, all right, but you know, we're engineers, we pay attention to details, right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, okay, Python, all right. So the OpenSeas Pi package, which Minji just talked about, uh, you know, developed a few years ago, is a paper he and I and uh, Frank wrote. In Software X 2017, but as Minji went through, right, you can in, import OpenSeas alongside popular things like NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, uh, Pandas, uh, other things, and it's you know OpenSeas just becomes another module within the Python ecosystem. All right, pip install available on all 
operating systems. Okay. Um, you don't really need to use MATLAB anymore because basically everything you can do in MATLAB, you can do in Python. Okay, or at least 99%, right? And then uh, Jupyter Notebooks are a, a nice uh, thing uh, as well. Okay, uh, so little screenshots uh, shown there, all right, of, you know, just running a Python interpreter uh, line by line, right, or, you know, a, a notebook, all right. Okay, and then, you know, kind of Python gets... Uh, picked on a little bit for its carbon footprint, all right? Uh, you know, you're doing a good job when uh, people uh, look at these things, right? Uh, or, or, I mean, Python's doing a good job, uh, okay? But, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, there's plenty of environmentally friendly alternatives. Python's the most CO2 intensive, least efficient of languages in astronomy, and probably translates to, uh, uh, finite element analysis as well but you know just just to make it clear because some people have asked this before like you know open seas pi is not native python uh, it's you know just like open seas tickle right the scripting language creates c++ objects through api calls so what's being run underneath is all c++ and fortran so you know like here's c++ here's fortran all right python it's way up here two orders of magnitude more uh, actually, I've, I've seen some uh, frame analysis code written in raw or native Python, like without Cython or any of the other optimizers, and it it's pretty slow, uh, to be honest. All right, but that's not OpenSea's Pi. All right, it's not native Python. All right, it's all you know fast C++ uh, and Fortran. Okay, so no different from uh, OpenSea's Tickle. All right. Okay, so, you know, when you're, you're building models, right, uh, or doing analyses, you know, don't, don't go straight to the finish line. Like, don't, don't, I, I've seen students do this, you know, all the time, you know, they need to do a incremental dynamic analysis for RC frames, and they just build a frame, do, do an IDA, and then it doesn't work, right, for whatever reason. All right, so, you know, if you're just starting out, like, start small, right? Uh, it doesn't, I, I can't say it enough, I guess, uh, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, but, you know, start small, start with things that, where you know the solution, right? Do some sanity checks, right? Like, this is the simplest thing possible, right? Simple, simple span, end moment. These are the reactions. This, this always, like, trips up, uh, my statics class too is like you give you give a pin pin beam with a moment and then you ask to find the reactions like you know the up and down thing is like it, it's a great problem right uh, but then you know the rotations at the end you know we know you know it's flexibilities right ml over 6 ei ml over 3 ei right so you know you can define you know, very simple scripts right with variables two nodes an element right uh and then, you know, compare the uh, computed solutions with the expected, you know, closed form solutions, right? And just, you know, make sure everything's uh, uh, checking out, right? So start small, all right? And, you know, remember, remember the basics, right? So as you're getting to that point where you're, you know, doing your, your 3D uh, IDAs, right? You know, just remember, it's a, it's a marathon, not a sprint, right? So make, make the sanity checks along the way, right? Do the moment curvature analysis, like shown over here, right? Look at the eigenvalues, make sure they make sense, you know, for your dynamic analysis. Gravity loads, is everything in equilibrium? You know, do do all the things, you know, that you uh, you learn in, in your courses, right? And then, you know, to track down errors, which inevitably are going to happen, right? You know, set up your script so you can easily go between material linear and nonlinear behavior, right? And then, you know, if you have a modeling issue uh, or you think you found a bug, right, which occasionally happens, right, uh, develop a, a minimum working example uh, to demonstrate the problem. And sometimes just developing that minimum working example that sometimes resolves the issue, right? And it's not a bug, but sometimes there are bugs, right? I'll admit. Frank won't admit it, but I will, right? Okay, so, you know, j just to kind of 
you know, show you, you know, for some very simple models, right? I've put some little kind of challenges out there, like, you know, here, give you what's on the left, right? And then, you know, gather people's results uh, using OpenSeas or, or other software, uh, you know, the range of, of responses. So like if, you know, just if all these shapes, these dimensions, uh, steel, you know, what's the horizontal displacement of this joint under this gravity loading, right? It's asymmetric, so you'll get a little bit of, a little bit of drift, right? Uh, you know, you know, with with or without self weight, right? You can get, you know, pretty different results because these these are not very high loads, right? So the self weight you know, matters, right? Doesn't always matter that much, uh, but uh, for this particular loading whether or not you included self-weight mattered, right? But, you know, e even, you know, among eight people, right? You know, pr pretty much the same response with some, you know, difference in small differences in results or, or uh, roof displacement. You know, this is without self-weight and then with self-weight for, for people who used uh, the self-weight. Okay, so, you know, not pre pretty good, right? Uh, Pretty good results, all right. But still, you know, the the uh, response is sensitive to to modeling assumptions, right? And it gets even more uh, dispersed uh, when we look at SSI, right? Soil structure interaction. So say we have like an elastic pile, all right, with a given E value, diameter, uh, known these dimensions, you know, small load here, all right. And then uh, dense sand, you know, soil, which is a dense sand with 90% relative density, uh, which my uh, geotech colleagues tell me is all you need to know in order to uh, model the soil. All right. I still quite haven't figured out why that is, but I, I'll take their word for it. But, uh, you know, when, you know, we're looking at SSI, right, like there's a pretty big range of responses. Uh, you know, from, you know, from this challenge, right? Like this dashed line here is the median. This line down here is what happens if we just like fix the base right here at 6.1 meters, right? And do the, the structural engineering uh, approximation with a cantilever. So we're, you know, at least, you know, everyone was above, you know, that lower bound, which is good, I guess, all right? Uh, but you know, it, you know, a lot of modeling variability, right? Uh, is is the point even for for simple problems, all right? And then when we go to you know things that are, you know, this this is example 1.1 dot tickle, uh, which I think Frank made uh, many many years ago, right? You know, we were just putting numbers uh, together, right? Like five cross sectional area, ten. E is 3000, these dimensions, right? You know, but if you really, if it's a linear analysis, like a number is a number, right? And you get a result, right? But if you actually look at the, the model and you say, well, you know, these are pretty long members, pretty slender, you know, the L over R ratios range from 130 to 200. So yeah, this thing's gonna buckle before you get to any of these loads, right? So, but you know, how, how you model the structure or how you mimic reality, right, uh, makes a big difference uh, in the results. So these, you know, these members should buckle, right? So if if you don't consider geometric nonlinearity, right, you'll you'll get, you know, these results here, all right, at a displacement of 0.25 inches. But if you let these these members buckle, you know, the the two members on the right, especially, right, due to the compressive load and the the overturning, right these two are going to buckle, right? And you'll get something like this, right? And the, the load factor you can take is, you know, only about, about 0.1, right? And, and if you put a pin at the top here, you know, you'll get this kind of lower bound down here. Moment resisting joint, you know, you'll get these results here. But again, you know, you know how, how you model things, uh, you know, it makes a big difference. And, you know, OpenSeas will let you do all these different options, right? But uh, you, you got to understand uh, the limitations and the uh, the different approaches all right and I ran into this recently uh, with a, a 
colleague doing, you know, ETABS verification, right? Like just, you know, can we reproduce uh, uh, with open seas what's published in the, uh, for one example, very simple, uh, single story, three-dimensional frame uh, from the ETABS manual. And we found that there's many ways to get the wrong answer. And by wrong, I mean not the results shown here uh, in the manual. All right, so things like the mass distribution, rigid offsets with the columns, uh, rigid diaphragms, member properties, they all make a big difference. All right, so, and you can run off the rails in, in many different ways. So, you know, you have to understand the effect uh, of these modeling assumptions. And, you know, eventually we got to the right answer, right? Uh, you know, got these mode shapes, right? Which uh, I plotted here using OPS viz. Uh, from Sawerin Kokot at uh, Opol University Technology in Poland, all right. Uh, but it, we we got you know the, these these results. But it's it's easier said than done, all right. Uh, but you know, the point is, you know, all, all of these things matter, right? The stiffness, mass distribution, how you do what what's rigid, and what are the offsets, you know, orientations, all this stuff, right? And again, this is a very simple simple model. Okay, and speaking of uh, you know challenges, I wanted to plug a uh, something that was actually released yesterday, uh, which is a blind prediction contest uh, from Peer. All right, again the you know kind of the originators of Open Seas, if you will. Uh, but there's a again just contest open yesterday, like July 21st. All right, but it's a reinforced concrete column uh, rectangle or square section shown here. All right, subjected to a lateral load. Uh, the contest is designed to be kind of quick, like they encourage spreadsheets or hand calculations, uh, but they say numerical simulations are welcome, but not necessary. But you know, here's the, the criteria all right, and the scoring uh, for the contest. URL is given uh, down here. But you know, mo mode of failure, multiple choice, all right, hopefully not none of the above. All right? uh, uh, peak lateral strength, storage of ratio, uh, displacement ductility, does it need to be retrofit, yes or no, all right. Uh, deadlines in uh, a few weeks, all right, or, or excuse me, deadline for questions, uh, and then the deadline for submittal of results is in September, and then the results will be announced, uh, I assume, in late September. Okay, so if you're interested, uh, definitely check that out, all right. Uh, Okay, and then uh, just kind of transitioning into, you know, where things are. Uh, this, th that was kind of the present with open seas and, you know, we're kind of, you know, community is important. All right, so you know, there's a lot of resources out there uh, for uh, questions uh, like the message board, uh, openseas.berkeley.edu slash community. Uh, still a good place to ask questions and occasionally get answers, uh, but there's a lot of spam. All right. Uh, it's also an active Facebook group that uh, where a lot of questions are answered. The Facebook group's a little bit nicer in a way than the message board because it's easy to upload pictures and uh, see dialogues a little bit easier than the PHP uh, message board. Um, and then, you know, Sylvia's Brainery uh, has uh, a lot of resources uh, and, you know, weekly meetings like with uh, Cafe, Cafecito. Uh, some Brainery Bytes, where Sylvia's done uh, some Jupyter Notebooks, uh, which are demonstrate some key aspects of Open Seas, uh, and then also some some courses available. Okay, so uh, all you know all about building uh, community. Okay, and then uh, documentation. All right, I was looking at this uh, the other day. There's actually still some uh, some of the old tech files or law tech files that. Uh, Frank and Greg used uh, to initially document G3 and Open Seas. Uh, in fact, uh, these files are still available within the Open Seas GitHub. They got carried over from zip disk to S CVS to SVN and now GitHub. All right, uh, so if you look in source slash doc, there's G3 primer or primer uh, dot tech. All right, uh, but there's, I, I, I didn't try to compile the LaTeX files. Uh, but uh, the files are still there, and you can kind of see, you know, where things stood uh, uh, 20 years ago uh, with Open Seas. 
lot of things have changed, but a lot of things have not. Okay, so it's uh, it's almost like hieroglyphics or cave drawings, right? Uh, to see these uh, old snapshots, all right? But that was interesting to see. But uh, you know, a after that, uh, yeah, the the Open Seas Wiki was created, all right? Still uh, a good resource for examples and documentation. And uh, Frank is slowly moving uh, documentation over to GitHub, all right? Uh, it's, OpenC slash OpenC's documentation. So a separate repo from the source code, all right, but within the same same organization, all right, uh, OpenC's uh, here. Okay, uh, so you be on the lookout uh, for that, okay? But, you know, there is documentation out there. Not everything is documented, but uh, it's, it's there, okay? Uh, in terms of visualization, there's uh, a few tools out there like OpenSeas Navigator, uh, ECs, uh, STKO, and then uh, GID plus OpenSeas. And then there's a couple of uh, Python visualization tools that are included in the uh, OpenSeas Pi uh, package. Right? They come directly with the pip install you know, that, that Minji talked about uh, in the last uh, presentation. Okay. So you know, you know, lo looking at your model is uh, very, very important, right? Just to kind of you know check for errors, but then also make sure the behavior is right and the response is right. Okay, so here's like a you know pretty regular building with some some braces, all right, visualized through through ECs, and you can get uh, you know s similar type visualization with uh, Navigator, STKO, and uh, GID, uh, I believe. I think the, the GID's focus is more on uh, solid elements, I think. I haven't, I haven't used it, but uh, I, I assume you can do any, any open seas. All, all of these can handle open seas model, any open seas model. Uh, I'm 99.9% .9 sure. Okay. Okay. But, you know, like, you know, we kind of, if we kind of pry open uh, open seas, you know, some of the more recent developments, you know, we've, if we can extract the stiffness matrix uh, and you know get a hold of those things and kind of do stuff with Python, right? You can start to build new capabilities, right? Like uh, Luigi Caio uh, posted recently about how to how to do buckling analysis within within Open Seas, which I thought we would just never be able to do, right? Because of the programming complexity, but it turns out you can, you know, use print a function to get the stiffness matrix for a frame with and without reference loads and then do some eigenvalue analysis within Python, right, uh, in order to uh, get the buckling loads. And it, it, it works pretty well. Uh, okay. And you can also, you know, extract uh, mass damping stiffness uh, and assemble matrices like for state space analysis uh, of non-classical damping. All right, something that's not built into open seas, but you know, if you can get these matrices and then wrap it and do some calculations outside of open seas within Python, right? You can, you know, analyze uh, non-classically damped uh, systems and get the uh, uh, modes, uh, mode shapes, uh, all that stuff. Okay, so uh, again, I, apparently I'm stuck in the 80s, uh, but you know, give me MCK, give me Give me all your love and all your hugs and kisses too from uh, ZZ Top uh, back in the 80s. All right, uh, I watched a lot of MTV. So uh, anyway, uh, so that's where this name. Give me mass damping stiffness. All right, uh, things just yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, so you know, you know, um, you know, current capabilities. You know, as as Minji went through particle finite element method. All right. Uh, you know, it's a Lagrangian formulation, uh, as Minji uh, showed. Uh, so you can you know, do anything you can do with with Open C's structural elements. Uh, you can you can throw some fluids at it and get the fluid loading, right? Which allows us to do things like multi-hazard simulations, tsunami following earthquakes. This is you know ground motions and tsunamis from a, a different. Uh, this is from a bridge model uh, in this paper with a lead author, Trevor Carey, in the Journal of Bridge, Engin Journal of Bridge Engineering a few years ago, uh, where we did some 
you know, sequential analyses to look at, you know, interaction or develop interaction diagrams of hydrodynamic force with spectral uh, acceleration. All right, so you run it over many ground motions and for different flow heights, all right, three and a half meters, you know, different flow height. This is on the actually the same bridge model that was in that SSI modeling challenge. Uh, uh, well, same geometry and everything, but um, you know, look at the interaction between uh, tsunami and seismic hazards, right? And you'll see, you know, there, there's a little bit of interaction, but pretty much uh, uh, when the tsunami comes, it's, if it's a big one, it's all over, right? Uh, and then also uh, structural fire engineering, right? Uh, so there's open seas for fire, which is, has thermomechanical models in open seas. Uh, there's a repository on GitHub for open seas for fire, which is separate from the main open seas uh, that we uh, uh, that I talked about a few minutes ago, all right? Um, and it has the repository has a zip file of the modified source code, uh, which uh, makes it kind of difficult to see what the modifications are and makes it kind of difficult to look at diffs and revisions. And I don't know how you do a pull request on a zip file, but uh, at any rate, uh, you know, we're, there's also in the main open seas, uh, yeah, it's, some researchers, uh, including uh, some researchers here at OSU, uh, are you know working on you know some uh, verification examples uh, within the main open seas, just, just so we can like make sure that everything is still uh, in sync with uh, the, with what's been uh, shown for open seas uh, for fire. So those efforts are are ongoing. All right. Okay. Uh, high performance computing, which uh, I believe you've uh, you know, Minji talked about a little bit, and then uh, I think earlier in the day, uh, Asdea talked about uh, parallel computing uh, as well. But uh, OpenSea's MP, SP, it's pretty easy to do on Linux, all right? Uh, the Windows version, uh, at least the one in, uh, you can compile out of GitHub, is in kind of a holding pattern. We're trying to figure out how to update MPI and MOMPS and Parmetis and all that stuff, all right? Uh, and then the GPU computing, uh, with open seas, I think as as Minji mentioned, you know, it's there's GPUs linear equation solvers, right? We can solve AX equals B, all right. But that's not the whole picture of you know making open seas uh, GPU enabled, all right. Uh, you know, all AX equals B is a fairly standard operation, but everything else like state determination, assembly. Uh, doing the integrators you know, with GPUs, that's going to take uh, a lot of work, all right? So that's kind of present and future efforts with uh, open seas. Also, you know, machine learning is uh, a hot topic, all right? Uh, there's, you know, two types of machine learning and my, my limited knowledge of machine learning. Uh, they're supervised and which is like classification type problems. And then there's unsupervised learning uh, where you, you don't really know what the outcome is going to be. And I think open seas is ideally suited for uh, unsupervised learning where uh, you do physics informed type neural networks. Like you predict a response from some inputs, you know, based on training uh, a neural network uh, with physics informed uh, data. All right. So, like a, a water column on an elastic obstacle. All right, with machine learning, this is also some work from OSU, uh, where you know you can look at the actual response uh, of this column. All right, very floppy cantilever, right, and then uh, the prediction after doing some machine learning. All right, so we've we've used Open Seas uh, uh, for that, and I, I think that's you know for the foreseeable future uh, something that will be a very interesting application of, of Open Seas. Okay, so uh, to kind of start to wrap things up, all right, uh, you know, the means and, and ends, right? So uh, I, I think for most users, uh, open seas is usually seen as just a means to an end, right? 
like a way to get from A to B or from the beginning to the end, right? And that end might be an advanced degree or a higher paying job, nothing wrong with that at all, all right? Uh, but open seas uh, can also be an end in itself, all right? So, you know, use open seas to create something, uh, to, to think logically through scripting, you know, build, build scripts, be creative, right? Put it out there, share it with everyone, right? It's, it's very enjoyable, right? So, you know, get, getting from A to B or from beginning to end, right? It's not always a straight line, okay? The journey, right, is uh, the fun part, right? And I got, found this graphic from this uh, uh, website uh, down here. But again, you know, enjoy the journey, right? Uh, uh, be creative, right? Okay, and it's it's also I'm gonna pick on David a little bit, uh, but you know, it, it's a fine line between uh, love and hate. I think we've all hated open seas. Uh, at some point, uh, this was the first uh, tweet about open seas uh, that I could find uh, from ten years ago. So. Uh, basically saying he hates open seas and uh, uh, he's starting a trending topic. Uh, fortunately, it did not trend. Uh, no open seas hasn't been canceled yet. Uh, but you know, t 10 years later, uh, David says uh, uh, he was frustrated uh, and uh, as, as he was starting to learn uh, open seas and but now he recommends it uh, within his, his master's program in uh, earthquake engineering as the best program uh, for uh, dynamic analysis. So I think at some point we've all hated open seas. I, I've been there, uh, but eventually uh, we all love it, right? Uh, okay, so finally, uh, one last parting shot, right? Uh, there, there's a 100% chance you're going to have to write about your open seas analyses, right? You're not going to do a bunch of analyses and then just call it a day, right? You're going to have to write a journal paper, manuscript, uh, write a report, uh, memos, uh, write documentation, some combination of all those things, all right? And just like open seas, uh, the more you write, the better you become, right? The more you open seas, uh, the better you become, uh, okay? So uh, I, I started out bad at open seas uh, or G3, got better at it. Uh, I started out as a bad writer, still a bad writer, all right, but uh, slightly better, maybe less bad is uh, the best way to put it. But you know, it's, these are some books uh, that have helped me like oh, with, with writing over the years, all right? So in terms of like writing mechanics, all right, this Keys to Great Writing by Stephen Wilbers is really good. All right. And then in terms of like, you know, uh, some exercises and, and things that will help you become uh, a better academic writer, this book by Patricia Goodson has been very helpful. All right. And then in terms of, you know, getting like uh, a schedule, finding time to write, which is a myth, all right? You got to you gotta reserve time or protect time to write. This book, How to Write a Lot, is, is very, very good, all right? And then uh, this, in terms of maintaining uh, motivation, uh, this Write No Matter What is, uh, I found to be a very good, good book, okay? So th these first two are good for like mechanics, all right? Of writing, uh, this how to write a lot is good when you're maybe as a PhD finishing your PhD or postdoc or assistant professor. Uh, you know, it really talks about how you manage your time and uh, reserve time for for writing. And then when you get to be old, uh, tenured, uh, full professor, you got to maintain momentum, right? And that's this last book is really about that. So kind of from it, this is ordered chronologically in terms of use, right? Like PhD, graduate studies, assistant professors, full professors, right? And then also, uh, I, I'm going to encourage Jack to write a book uh, about writing, but he has a very excellent uh, website uh, shown here. Uh, the link is shown here uh, about uh, writing and presenting your work, and it's all geared towards structural 
uh, engineering. You know, a lot, a lot of this, the, these three books are kind of from social science, but it's all like universal uh, type stuff. But, you know, Jack has some really good uh, advice, uh, uh, you know, catered to uh, engineering. So eventually I'll have like a fifth book cover here with, uh, with what I hope will be Jack's book on, uh, on writing. Okay. So uh, to wrap things up, uh, as you've seen, known, experienced, overcome, uh, there's a very steep learning curve to open seas. And at times it can feel like a mystery, right? Uh, but you do have full control of your model and analysis, uh, which is a good thing, right? But you have to take the time to understand what you're modeling, right? So it's not really you get what you pay for, right? You get what you put into it or you get out of it what you put into it. There's, you know, several resources available if you need help uh, as the community continues to grow. All right. And finally, you know, again, you know, you're going to have to write about it. So, you know, spend some time to, uh, you know, explain what you're doing uh, with open seas through uh, written communication. And uh, it's it's very uh, rewarding. OK, so uh, with that, uh, I think that's it. And thank you.